This is Ao Man Long. He serves as the first secretary for public works in the government of Macau. The official salary of him and his wife was just about 200,000 US dollars per year. However, Ao Man Long lived a life of luxury far beyond that. He possessed multiple luxury cars, expensive watches, with one alone being worth over 150,000 US dollars, and more expensive products like shark fins. He amassed a fortune of well over 100 million US dollars as a public servant with his money spread in over 100 bank accounts across the world. However, in 2008 he was sentenced to 27 years in prison for money laundering and slept with a 100 million US dollar fine, basically all his assets. This was the highest profile case surrounding money laundering in Macau, but most covering the case were skeptical that one man alone could take corruption to such a scale without anyone else involved. They think so because Ao Man Long was mainly their fall guy. But this is only the tip of the iceberg regarding money laundering in Macau. When thinking about the money laundering capital of the world, London comes to mind. Which is true depending on how you interpret it. Especially as London is significantly more international. However, when looking at the volume of laundered money, a study from Credas found that an estimated 104 billion US dollars is laundered every year throughout all of the UK. This number, however, is dwarfed by the city of Macau alone. The Congressional Executive Commission on China reports that about 202 billion illegally sourced funds are moved through Macau each year. While all of the US equates its criminal activity to about 256 billion US dollars, France comes after the UK with about 64 billion US dollars each year and Germany 60 billion US dollars. Keep in mind that this is comparing entire countries to just a single city within China. How did Macau become such a money laundering hub and most of all, why is nobody stopping it? The first recorded inhabitants of Macau were those seeking refuge from the invading Mongols during the year 1200. Until the Portuguese arrived in the early 16th century, Macau remained a small fishing village with a population of just about 400 inhabitants. By 1557, a permanent Portuguese settlement was established while the Portuguese paid annual rent in silver to the Chinese for the privilege of trading there. The locals first gave Macau the name Yama Gang. When Portuguese explorers first arrived in the area and asked for the place name, the locals thought they were asking about the temple and told them it was Makok. This became Macau over the years. The Portuguese used Macau as a trading hub, but from the mid 17th century, the balance of power of global trade began to shift away from Portugal as Britain was becoming increasingly powerful in the region. Hong Kong put Macau more and more in their shadow, as they were a British colony. The Portuguese put their focus more and more to the gold mines in South America, rather than trading from Macau. In order to find an alternative source of revenue, Macau legalized gambling in 1844. Gambling is illegal in the mainland of China and has been since 1935. This meant going to Macau to gamble became a popular activity among the rich. In 1999, Macau was returned to the Chinese rule as a special administrative region under the one country, two systems principle along with Hong Kong. However, gambling remained legal. The city still has a Portuguese touch to this day. Nowadays, 80% of Macau's 82,000 GDP per capita is contributed through the casino industry by far the nation's most prominent source of funds. In 2006 Macau surpassed Las Vegas as the most successful gambling hub across the world and brings in six times more gambling revenue than Las Vegas. But what does gambling have to do with money laundering? Well, a whole lot as it turns out in China. China only allows 20,000 yuan to be moved out of the mainland at the time and about 50,000 US dollars per year. For a rich person, it would take their entire life to just move a small part of their fortune out. To circumvent that, Chinese high rollers can do one of two things. They can deposit money 
with so-called junkets in the mainland and use that money in Macau, or they can borrow from junket agents. Junkets are basically gaming promoters, which ferry money across borders. These junket agents vary from sole actors to publicly listed companies. They help arrange for visas and accommodations, including VIP rooms. They also collect gambling debts. If the rich person chooses to deposit the money, the junkets then ferry that money across borders to Macau. That rich person then uses that money in Macau. Once they are done gambling, they can take their winnings in US funds or Hong Kong dollars and invest it in property or offshore tax havens. They can basically do whatever they want with it and are not limited to that measly 50,000 US dollars limit a year anymore. I said previously that junkets also collect gambling debts. However, Chinese courts do not recognize or enforce payments on casino debts, since gambling itself in China is illegal. This means that junkets themselves often rely on triads to collect their debt. An academic paper has found that Hong Kong's triads themselves basically dominate Macau junkets. According to a member of the notorious 14K triads, Interviewed for the study, most VIP room contractors or triads are businessmen with triad background. The triads are a Chinese transnational organized crime syndicate based in Greater China and they have outposts in various countries with significant overseas Chinese populations like San Francisco or New York. They make sure that the debt to those casinos is paid, even when the indebted person is back in the mainland. But not only the super rich are using Macau to gamble, over 35 million tourists visited Macau in 2018 before the virus and the majority used their visit to gamble there and most of them do not do so for money laundering purposes. Macau's tax income is almost 90% contributed by the casino industry. But why is this money laundering still going on? China obviously wants their rich to keep their money in China. That's why the 50,000 US dollars a year regulation is there in the first place. It's not like China is doing nothing. It's quite the opposite, China is cracking down on it. China started its official anti-corruption campaign in 2012, when Xi Jinping came to power. Alvin Zhao, for example, the chairman of Macau's biggest junket operator Sun City, was arrested by authorities. He is facing a string of charges, including fraud, money laundering and illegal gambling. That could see him spend decades in prison if convicted. Alvin Zhao started Sun City in 2007 and brought wealthy Chinese gamblers to casinos in Macau. His business evolved into an investment company that runs hotels and resorts, travel and property businesses even with a segment in the Philippines overseeing casinos. Alvin Chow was dubbed the Chunker King and was once seen as the pillar of the city and he sponsored myriad major events including an international film festival and the annual Macau Grand Prix. This all came crashing down when in 2019 Chinese state media first accused Sun City Group of helping Chinese gamblers bet illegally via online platforms based in the Philippines and Cambodia. Those illegal online platforms ran from those countries or an entire video on its own. But Chao alone is facing 286 criminal courts. It is alleged that the group alone cheated Macau's government out of about a billion US dollars in tax revenue, according to an investigation. The dollar amount which the Chinese government saw leave its country is in the dozens of billions, with Chinese businessmen buying up properties in Toronto, London and other metropolitan cities. Elvin Chao is not the only one which is facing the wrath of the Chinese government. Macau's second biggest junket boss, Tak Chun Kurup's Levo Chan is also facing charges of illegal gambling and money laundering. All of this has led to a dwindling of those VIP rooms across the city's 41 casinos and therefore a massive loss of income for the city. This is far from the only issue the city is facing. The Covid pandemic has had a devastating impact on the world and the tiny city-state of Macau has not been immune. While the Chinese enclave of Macau is usually known for its world-famous casinos, the pandemic has had a drastic effect on the city, with a total shutdown of the gambling industry 
and a significant economic downturn. The effects of the pandemic on Macau began in mid-January 2020, when the Chinese government imposed a travel ban on all visitors from mainland China. This was a devastating blow to the city, which relies heavily on mainland tourists for its gambling industry and tourism. As the pandemic unfolded, the situation for Macau only worsened. In March, the city imposed a 14-day quarantine for all visitors and residents. And in April, the government enforced a strict lockdown, closing all casinos, hotels and other entertainment venues. This was a devastating blow to the local economy, which relies heavily on the tourism and gambling industries. Despite the grim situation, Macau is showing signs of recovery. As the pandemic subsides and the lockdown measures are eased, the city is slowly beginning to open back up. The casinos and hotels are beginning to reopen and the tourism industry is starting to recover. The economic impact of the pandemic has been severe, but Macau is resilient and determined to bounce back. As the city slowly recovers, the people of Macau are hopeful for the future. With the right measures in place, the city can emerge from this crisis stronger than before.